डियर फ्रेंड्स जय भीम जय भारत नम बुद्धा है आई एम रीडिंग दिस बुक वे टू निबान बाय वेनरेबल नारद हेरा पब्लिश बाय बुद्धिस्ट कल्चरल सेंटर श्रीलंका दिस बुक इज गिविंग इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ निबान इन बुद्धिज्म आई हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश्ड वन चैप्टर in in three videos on karuna metta mudit and upekha the four virtues now i am begin another chapter the way to nibbana the middle path leads to tranquility realization and enlightenment and nibbana dhamma dhamma chakshut morality the way to nibbana is the middle path which avoids the extreme of self mortification that weakens the intellect and the extreme of self indulgence that retards moral progress this middle path consists of the following eight factors please listen this this middle path consists of the following eight factors right understanding right thoughts right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness and right concentration the first two are classified as wisdom or panna the second three as morality or sil and the last three as concentration or samadhi so let us see which are these the first two are wisdom and these first two are right understanding and right thought so it is panna or wisdom that is right understanding and right thoughts the next the second three as morality or seal in sanskrit seal is called as shila so what is what are the three seals or morality right speech right action right livelihood right speech right action right livelihood the first were the two wisdom first were like the first two were the wisdoms right understanding and right thought and the last three as concentration or samadhi these three are right effort right mindfulness and right action right effort right mindfulness and right concentration so wisdom path are under right understanding and right thought morality or seal part are right action right livelihood and right speech and the last three are the concentration or samadhi part the right effort right mindfulness and right concentration according to the order of development morality concentration and wisdom are the three stages on the grand highway that leads to nibbana these three stages are embodied in that beautiful ancient word verse sabb panas akkar naam kusalasa upasampada सच्ची तपारी दोपना एतम बुद्धन संसाम टू सीस एविल टू सीस फ्रॉम ऑल एविल टू कल्टिवेट गुड टू प्यूरिफाई वंस माइंड दिस इज द एडवाइस ऑफ ऑल बुद्ध सी वट ही सिंग टू सीस फ्रॉम ऑल एविल टू कल्टिवेट गुड to purify one's mind 
is the advice of all the booths. To reap what we sow, evil results in pain and good in happiness. Our pain and happiness are the direct result of our own good and evil. The person with a right understanding realizes this just law of action and reaction and of his own accord refrains from evil and does good to the best of his ability. He does so for his own good and for the good of others. He considers it his duty to live as a blessing to himself and to all others. What he said previous to this, he is telling this about that we reap what we sow, evil results in pain and good in happiness. Our pain and happiness are the direct results of our own good and evil. Knowing that life is precious to all as that none has any right whatever to destroy the life of another, he extends compassion and loving kindness that is karuna, compassion and loving kindness that is metta towards every living being even to the tiniest creature that crawls at his feet and refrains from killing or causing injury to any living beings. I would like to add here my uh, what I do. Uh, I go to park for a walk and there I, 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 I see many ants on the path. So I try to uh, keep an eye on those ants so that they won't get killed. There is no rule that one is to be preyed upon by another. However, the strong do mercilessly kill the weak and feast on their flesh. This is animal instinct. Such actions by animals are excusable because they know not what they do. But when those who are gifted with reason and understanding perpetrated such crimes, there is no excuse whether to satisfy one's palate or as pastime. It is not justifiable to kill or to cause other living beings to be killed. If the killing of animals is wrong, how much more heinous is it to kill human beings individually or collectively employing brutal or so-called civilized methods for the sake of peace, religion or any other seemingly good purpose. Honesty, trustworthiness and uprightness also are the characteristics of a person with right understanding. What are these? Honesty, trustworthiness and uprightness are also characteristics of a person with right understanding. Such a person tries to abstain from all forms of stealing, whether in its dissembled or obvious forms, abstaining from sexual misconduct, which debases the exalted nature of man. He tries to be pure and chaste. He avoids false speech, harsh language, slander and frivolous talks, and speaks only what is true sweet, kind and helpful. A certain drinks and drugs promote heedlessness and mental distraction. He avoids intoxicating liquor and cultivates heedfulness and clarity of vision. These elementary principles of regulated behavior are essential to one who treats who treads the path to debunk chiefly because they tend to control both deeds and words. Violation of them introduces obstacles and hinder his moral progress of the path. Observance of them means smooth and steady progress along the path. 
having progressed a step further in his gradual advance the aspirant now tries to control his sense to control craving for food and to promote buoyancy of mind and body abstemious abstemiousness or fasting at least once a month is advisable plain and simple living is preferable to a luxurious one which makes one a slave to passions a life of celibacy is recommended as one's valuable energy thus conserved could then be utilized wholly for the intellect and moral welfare of oneself and others in such a life one is detached from additional worldly bond that impede moral progress almost all spiritual teachers it would appear have nourished their bodies sparingly and have led a life of strict celibacy simplicity voluntary poverty and self control while he progresses slowly and steadily with regulated words and deeds and sense restraint the kamik the kamik or karmic force of the striving aspirant compels him to renounce worldly pleasures and adopt the ascetic life to him then comes the ideas that a dent or strief is household life a field and filled with toil and need but free and high as the open sky is the life the homeless lead i would repeat this again a dent or strief is household life and filled with toil and need but free and high as the open sky is the life of the homeless lead is the life the homeless lead thus realizing the vanity of sensual pleasures he voluntarily forsake all earthly possessions and donning the ascetic donning the ascetic crafts tries tries to lead the holy life in all its purity moral layman more layman can realize nibban it is not please listen this carefully it is not however the external appearance that makes a man holy but internal purification and an exemplary life trans i would repeat this again it is not however the external appearance that makes a man holy but internal purification and an exemplary life transformation would come from within not from without it is absolutely necessary to retire to solitude and lead the life of an ascetic to realize nibbana the life of a bhikkhu no doubt expedites expedites and facilitates spiritual progress but even as a layman sainthood may be attained he who attains arhatship or sainthood as a layman is the in the face of all temptations is certainly more praiseworthy than a bhikkhu who attains arhatship living amidst surrounding that are not distracting concerning a minister who attained arhatship while seated on an elephant deck in his best apparel the buddha remarked even though a man be richly adorned if he walks in peace if he be quiet subdued certain and pure and if he refrains from injuring any living being that man is a brahmin that man is a hermit that man is a monk There have been several such instances of laymen who realized nibban without renouncing the world. The most devout and generous lay follower, Anath Pindik, was a sotan, sotpan, sutpan. The Sakya Mahanama 
वॉज ए साक्यगामी द पोटर घटिकार घाटिकार वॉज एन अंगामी द किंग सुधोधन डाइट एस एन अरहत ए भिक्खू ए भिक्खू इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू ऑब्जर्व द फोर काइंड ऑफ हायर मॉरलिटी नेमली पतिमुख सिल और द फंडामेंटल मॉरल कोड इंद्रिय सवर्ण इंद्रिय संवर सिल और मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू सेंस रेस्ट्रेंस अजीव परिशुद्धि अजीव परिशुद्धि सिल और मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू प्योरिटी ऑफ लाइवलीहुड पच्चे सनि पच्चे पच्चे सनिशित सिल और मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू द यूज ऑफ द नेसेसरीज ऑफ लाइफ आई वुड रिपीट दिस द फंडामेंटल मॉरल कोड मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू सेंस रेस्ट्रेंट मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू प्योरिटी ऑफ लाइवलीहुड मॉरलिटी पर्टेनिंग टू द यूज ऑफ द नेसेसरी ऑफ लाइफ these four kinds of morality are collectively called sil visuddhi or purity of virtue the first of the seven stages of purity of the way of the way to nibbana when a person enters the orders and received his higher upsampada ordination he is called a bhikkhu there is no english equivalent that exactly conveys the meaning of this pali term bhikkhu medicant monk may be suggested as the nearest translation not in the sense of one who begs but in the sense of one who lives on alms there are no woes for a bhikkhu of his own accord he becomes a bhikkhu in order to lead the holy life as long as he likes he is at liberty to leave the order at any time A bhikkhu is bound to observe 220 rules apart from several other minor ones the four major rules which deal with perfect celibacy stealing murder and false claims to higher spiritual powers what are these four celibacy perf- celibacy stealing murder and false claims to higher spiritual powers must strictly be observed if he violates any of them he becomes defected or parajik and automatically ceases to be a bhikkhu if he wishes he can reenter the order and remain as a samaner or novice in the case of other rules which he violates he has to make amends according to the gravity of the offenses among the silent characteristics of a bhikkhu are purity perfect celibacy voluntary poverty humility simplicity selfless service self control patience compassion and harmlessness i would repeat this again among the silent characteristics of a bhikkhu are purity perfect celibacy voluntary poverty humility simplicity selfless service self control patience compassion and harmlessness the life of a bhikkhu or in other words renunciation of worldly pleasures and ambitions is only an effective means to attain nibbana but is not an end in itself so he has written in this chapter that it is not only that bhikkhus but a worldly man can also attain nibbana and buddha has said about the worldly man that even though a man be richly adorned if he walks in peace if he be quiet subdued certain and pure and if he refrains from injuring any living being that man is a brahmin that man is a hermit that man is a monk so we would start about the next chapter about the nibbana that is the meditation and we will continue in another video i hope you will enjoy this
This is from his book, The Way to Nibbana by Venerable Narathera. Thank you very much for listening. Jai Bhim Namo Buddhaya.